Uh, next session this morning, another one that may seem like it's uh, you know a little on the remedial side, but uh, I think you'll find some value in it, is uh, about Zen, Zen Server, and Zappy. What's the difference? Uh, the, the, the two suspects up front here, uh, I, I'm Russ, uh, I'm Zen Evangelist, so I, that means I have a big mouth, and I know where the airport is and I know how to use it, so uh, I, I run around talking about Zen uh, to whomever, and James? Uh, my name's James Ballpin, I work for Citrix uh, as Head of Technology for the Zen Server Product Group, um, and uh, I'm gonna uh, help Russ to uh, untangle what's Zen, what's Zen Server, and uh, to follow up on some of what Ryan talked about a little bit uh, about what XCP is. Alrighty, so you know, this is the basic question. Everyone knows what Zen is until you start talking about it. And I found this out the hard way. The hard way. I started it as the evangelist for Zen Project back in January now. And I've been to, I think, like eight or nine different conferences this year talking to people. And inevitably, you know, I, I, I stand up, I give my talk about one thing or another, and I engage other people afterwards, and oh, we're talking about using Zen, et cetera. And generally, 10 to 15 minutes into our discussion, uh, something like a version number will come up. And I'll realize they're not talking about the Zen project, they're talking about Zen server. Or they're not talking about Zen, they're talking about Zappy. So we just want to spend just uh, you know 20 minutes here, kind of drawing the lines so people understand where they are because it's fuzzy and we understand it's fuzzy, and it's fuzzy because we've made it fuzzy. So we're just going to try to clean it up just a little bit, um, and uh, get rid of a little bit of the confusion. So what's Zen itself? The Zen project. Uh, the leading open source hypervisor, and if you don't believe that, I'll give you the web page where it'll say exactly those words. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, it's open source now and always. And you know, this was uh, two years ago. This was the great misconception that uh, you know Zen was uh, was dying. Zen was closed source. Zen was a Citrix product. Uh, no, Zen is now open source. Will remain open source, and it's now part of the Linux Foundation collabor collaborative projects. Uh, so it will uh, very happily and proudly remain open source. Thank you very much. We're celebrating our 10th anniversary. I mean, if you look at the timeline, which we'll get to in a second, it actually started earlier than that, but this is 10 years since the first open source release of Zen itself. Um, and as someone mentioned earlier, you know, in, in industry years, that's a millennium. You know, anytime you can get a decade and it's still running strong. And it's also home for several sub-projects, uh, which we'll talk about very briefly. So here's just a short pictorial history. You know, it started with this thing called the XenoServer project. And if you go to the zenproject.org webpage, uh, you can actually see some of the original documents that came out of the design. How many people have been to uh, zenproject.org? Okay, good. How many people have accounts there? Okay, the rest of you have homework. <laughs> it's easy and we won't pester you. And the other thing is we also have a, a nice little monthly newsletter that just gives you news of the month. So it's, I mean, it's very light. We're not talking about junk. Uh, so in case some, some announcement came out that you're unaware of, it's a nice way to get kind of uh, up to snuff in three minutes. Um, but anyway, so you can find that information out on the website. We see, you know, the initial release. We see small things like, you know, Amazon and Rackspace all coming along. Um, we see the release of uh, Zen Cloud Platform, which James will talk about in a few minutes, and, and on into now. So, I mean, this is, you know, in... in in a very short uh, footprint, this is uh, the Zen history. Um, also, there's more detailed history out on the website. So, there are actually several sub-projects under the Zen project. Uh, the, the one that everyone knows, hopefully, is the hypervisor. It is the main game. Uh, it's why we're here. Then there's uh, PVOps, which technically is not a sub-project, but it is uh, it is what allowed us to get rid of all those nasty um, uh, Zen kernels that you had to install. It was uh, brought out in, uh, I think it was Brian's talk uh, earlier, that, um, that once upon a time you had to do a lot more 
because of the PVOps project now, it's just part of mainline Linux. So you don't have to do any funny tricks. Uh, that's wonderful. Uh, the, uh, uh, we talked about the hypervisor. Uh, the Zappy project, we're going to hear about that more in detail later. The Mirage OS, which was talked about earlier as well. This is just wonderful ability to have these small, lightweight, dedicated, uh, little uh, library-based operating systems so that will do one thing and do them really well, really quickly, and really lightly. Uh, really neat stuff. Once again, uh, if you go to zenproject.org, we've got all sorts of information out there about that as well. But all of this comes under the auspices of the Zen Project. Now, here's uh, a picture that you've probably seen more times than you care to think about if you've attended any Zen talks anywhere. But this, this is the basic uh, uh, design of the hypervisor. You know, and just to be very clear, because this comes out all the time, it doesn't actually run in the kernel. We see that it sits right on top of the hardware. Um, the bits that are in the kernel, um, or excuse me, not in the kernel, but uh, what we have sitting above the kernel is the control domain, which can then talk to the hypervisor, and it includes in there the device and the uh, the device drivers and the the models. So that that's all that's necessary there. Um, one of the big takeaways is that since it's not sharing, uh, it doesn't have a technically a host uh, machine. It the Zen VMs never compete with processes. They compete with other VMs for resources. And that's different inside some other uh, hypervisor schemes. So that's really important to know that you know, it's not a question of how busy some other VM is. It's, uh, it's at the VM level, not the process level. The architecture emphasizes security. And anyone who was at my security talk uh, yesterday, we went through some of the details about that, how that's can be accomplished. Uh, if you weren't there, you can find uh, the slides right now on the Linux Foundation website, and they'll be out on zenproject.org within, within a few days. And then <clears throat> the use of various tool stacks, uh, which we'll talk about a little bit more too as, as this session goes on, for the control domain. That allows the control domain to talk to the hypervisor. Default currently is XL. If you read older literature, you may see references to XM. XL is sort of XM on steroids. So you know, go go with Excel uh, when you can. Well, you, you do see, you know, we do have support for uh, Libvirt and Bursch. So I mean, if you're working in a, a you know an area that uh, wants to talk to KVM as well, that becomes kind of an easier way to uh, uh, to converse. And there is no native GUI as we've heard earlier. However, there are some very interesting things coming, and notably uh, Zen Orchestra uh, we'll be talking about later this afternoon and a little bit about Zen Center here uh, later in this talk. Zen Project has a number of corporate members. Um, and these are some very uh, notable names up here. And they are all vested in the success of the Zen Project. So if anyone ever tells you that no one cares about Zen, wrong. Just take a look at this picture. And there's some companies that care quite a bit about Zen. Um, and we can, we can add one more to that now. We can add NetApp to that now, who, who joined oh, fairly recently. Excellent. OK, I didn't have that on there. Thank you. So I mean, you know, this, the, the, these are people who care for a reason. And uh, um, if your company isn't up there and you're doing a lot of work with Zen, you should be asking yourself the question, should, should our company be talking about joining uh, in, in the uh, corporate members? It's a, it's a really good thing to do. Now, zenproject.org, as I mentioned, it's the hub of information for the Zen Project. So, uh, you know, it's newly revamped and revised when, when uh, the Zen Project went to the Linux Foundation in April. Uh, zenproject.org came on online. Uh, the big thing about it was that we wanted to start being able to reach out to both developers and users. If you remember the old zen.org, very developer-centric, we wanted to stop that. We wanted to have the information the developers need, but we wanted to make sure that you also had information that users can use. So we've got the new monthly newsletter, as I mentioned, and sign up if you haven't, uh, because we won't pester you. Right now, it's just, uh, it's just a once a month thing, and it has no fluff. 
we don't like fluff, so we're not going to pitch it on you. And then, of course, there is the Zen Project mascot, because a cuddly panda is a terrible thing to waste. Um, and you'll see him all around and so forth. So, and in fact, uh, one of these days we may get around to having a contest to actually name him. We don't actually have a name for this fella. So, uh, you know, keep your eyes open to the website and the newsletter. We, we may announce a contest soon. But if all of this is Zen Project, then what's Zen Server? Right, very good question. Thank you very much. So, um, just actually, while, while we're on the panda here, um, this is perhaps a good opportunity to plug the, uh, the Zen Developer Summit in Edinburgh next month. Uh, Edinburgh actually now is home to uh, uh, two pandas, I think, uh, one uh, on loan from, from China. So if you want to see a real proper life-size panda uh, that's not quite as fake as the, the tux that's wandering around downstairs <laughs> at the moment, come to Edinburgh next month. Anyway, so what's Zen server? Well, Zen. Zen's the engine, is the way we like to think about it. Uh, it's the thing that does the hard bits, the virtualization. It's how you can run multiple VMs on a piece of hardware. Uh, it's that low-level tool stack. XM is, is the CLI, ZND. Uh, more recently, Eb uh, Excel and, and LibXL, the Zen Lite uh, stack. So what's Zen Server? Well, Zen Server really is a distribution of Zen and all the other components you need to make a virtualization platform. So as we saw, for those of you who were in Brian's talk earlier, uh, we saw there was a kernel in there. We saw the picture with the, uh, uh, the, 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 the DOM zero and the, uh, the kernel running in that. You need to choose your Linux kernel. Um, so that's an important piece. You need a, some sort of tool stack. You can stop with Excel. That's fine. You can write a, uh, a configuration file, run Excel, create, point to that configuration file, go make yourself a, a domain. What we do with, uh, with Zen servers, we had a, a tool on top called Zappy. And I'll talk a bit more about what that is later on. And there's a whole bunch of other stuff. Uh, storage, how you set up storage, how you set up networking, how you manage those things, how you manage the VLANs, how you manage the IP addresses. So really what Zen is doing is bringing all the pieces together that you would ordinarily have to put together yourself in a generic Linux environment. Now, we sometimes use the term shrink-wrapped. Uh, so it's something you can just take out. Um, and as we, we saw in uh, Brian's talk earlier on, uh, you can just install this thing onto a box, not have to even worry there's Linux in there. In fact, when Citrix started doing Zen Server, uh, really called Zen Enterprise, uh, back in 2006, the intention was to target Windows admins who we thought would be scared uh, by, uh, by the, the Linux internals. So we actually did our best to try and hide uh, the fact there was Linux in there. So we're building on those, those basic virtualization foundations to add the, a higher level of system management. Some places we're overlapping with what cloud orchestration stacks are doing. Obviously, Zen Server predates OpenStack and CloudStack and so on. So now there's kind of a, a choice of different ways to, uh, to orchestrate your system. So Zen Server, if you like, kind of overlaps a bit with, with what the orchestration stacks are doing. Um, but there's an awful lot of uh, value added there. So um, history-wise, um, we've, we've actually got quite a long history, not as long as Zen. Um, 2006 was when it all started. Um, Zen Server started as a proprietary product um, of, of Zen Source, which was a, a startup that was later acquired by Citrix. Um, it, it started off uh, very, very basic um, with a very small number of customers. And when I talk about very small number, I mean fewer than we have people in this room. Um, and, uh, but we've, we've really come on a long way. So Zen Server 6.2 is the most recent shipping uh, product from Citrix. Uh, that is a, I'm not going to go for a product pitch here, that's, that's not, uh, not my intention, but that is now a free uh, product that's available for anyone to use all of its features uh, for no charge. Citrix sells a support contract. Uh, I'm not going to plug that, but it's very good. Um, uh, and uh, we've, at the same time, we announced that we would be moving the entire uh, of Zen server to be open source. Now, a number of the pieces had been open sourced already. Um, but this is really just finishing it off and also moving to a more open development model. And uh, for those of you who missed my talk on Monday um, on the evolution of Zen Server from an open source perspective, that'll be the recording of that will uh, hopefully be available soon, if, if not already. So a little bit about some of the pieces we have, and I'll just nod to the open sourcing as we have a quick look at these. Um, we've got a, we ba currently base Zen Server on uh, CentOS 5. It's 5.7, I think, in our mo most recent shipping. So thank you, KB, for, uh, for providing that for us. Um, 
we'll be moving to uh, CentOS 6, probably 6.4, uh, for the next release, um, unless 6.5 is uh, out uh, in time. And obviously, the, the Zen 4 CentOS 6 work uh, that, that Brian told us about earlier on is something that's actually very useful for building uh, the foundations of Zen Server. Uh, there's all sorts of other stuff in the box. Uh, storage management, uh, we had a bit of a discussion in an early, the earlier talk about uh, some of the different ways to manage storage. So there's a, a piece in there, a lot of Python for the control plane. Uh, the PV drivers, um, para-virtualized drivers, uh, are device drivers that are aware they're running on top of a Zen hypervisor, but they may actually be running in a fully virtualized guest virtual machine uh, that doesn't know it's being virtualized. Um, so that allows us to get much higher I.O. throughput. So we actually have Windows drivers that were previously proprietary that are now becoming open source. There's the Zen Center UI, uh, a Windows, <coughs> I apologize, uh, .NET based application. Again, we were targeting the Windows IT admin um, so we actually originally had a, a Java UI that was uh, compiled and packaged for both uh, platforms. Um, uh, so, but we, we moved on to the .NET UI really to satisfy that particular market. And there's all sorts of other stuff in the box. So a lo load of stuff that actually, it's all a lot of open source stuff in there, um, but stuff that we were not really developing in an open way. Big patch queues only published in source RPMs uh, when we published the binary. The thing that we're moving towards now is having everything be an open source project uh, on GitHub or equivalent where that's not, a, not suitable. Um, and everything's being done in the open. But I won't go into too much detail on that today because we don't have time, but uh, do talk to me or have a look at the video of my talk from Monday. So, zenserver.org. Um, so zenserver, just to be really, really clear, the Zen project, which Russ talked about, is a Linux Foundation collaborative project Zen Server, zenserver.org, is, is the open source home, the community home uh, for Zen Server. That is not part of the Linux Foundation. Um, so Citrix has not given Zen Server to the Linux Foundation. Um, that's uh, something that we don't think the Linux Foundation would want it. Um, they're not, they don't host Red Hat, they don't host Ubuntu, they don't host CentOS. Um, and Zen Server basically being a, a custom Linux distro, they don't host Zen Server either. Um, so zenserver.org is a Citrix-led project. Um, a lot of what we're trying to do is to get things out into the open, open communication, feedback, discussion. Um, what we really want to be able to do is to enable our ecosystem. We have a lot of partner companies building add-ons and services around ZenServer. So actually removing a lot of the barriers is, is key here. So zenserver.org, there's kind of two things we do. There are some specific components, Zen Center probably being the most obvious one, the UI. Um, the Windows PV drivers are in there too at the moment. Um, but it's also a distribution. Um, we are hacking the, the WhatsApp out of CentOS 5 at the moment, um, for which uh, we are deeply sorry. Um, but uh, we've, we've had to uh, make a, a lot of additions of newer packages, lots of patches. Uh, we're trying to move away from that. But at the end of the day, we are doing the job of a distro to some extent. So we're doing that distro job, configuration management, choice of versions, and so on, uh, as part of ZenServer.org. But also, within the Zen Server development team, we are contributing to other projects. So we are using the Zen project, we are using the Linux kernel, um, but we are making changes to those in order to deliver what we need in Zen Server. So the developers are working within the upstream communities, QMU is another one, and there's a, a few others as well, um, in order to, to get the code in we need and then consume those projects within Zen Server. Citrix Zen Server is a commercial product um, built off of the open source code base. Um, Citrix will be releasing, as it has done for, uh, for the past uh, seven plus years, um, a, a stream of versions of Zen Server. Um, they are now all, as I say, free, free, all features are free for use. Uh, you only pay for support. Um, uh, but you don't have to, you just go use it. We don't have any of the SKU limiting that we had before where the free version didn't have HA. Um, which is something we, we talked about in the earlier talk. Okay, so um, Zappy, what's, what's Zappy? We talked a little bit about that. It's a tool stack for managing a Zen system. It has a higher level of management than the low level LibZen Lite tool stack we have at the moment. So LibZen Lite really is about taking existing um, storage, existing networking, Linux bridges, OVSs, and so on, and starting and managing VMs using those. Zen Server really is orchestrating uh, the, uh, the creation and, and mapping and, and everything that's involved in setting up those, those entities. 
um, managing clustering in, in a multi-host environment, um, uh, coordinating the high availability failover and so on. That's actually been open source since 2009. Um, that itself is actually part of the Zen project. It's one of the sub-projects that, that Russ talked about earlier. Um, and we have, as Brian talked about in his talk earlier on, that is also packaged uh, for uh, Debian and Ubuntu. And we've, we've had uh, tech previews of the CentOS package. And I, I hope we to have something uh, a bit more formal on that uh, fairly soon. So this, was, uh, this is one that you wanted me to cover, wasn't it, Russ? Oh, yes. This is something. So what is XCP? Well, XCP, the Zen Cloud Platform. Um, this term became rather overloaded. We, we used it when we first open sourced the Zappy tool stack back in 2009. Um, the term has come to mean two distinct things. One is a synonym for Zappy itself. So you type apt-get install uh, XCP Zappy. Um, so that's sort of become the Zen Cloud Platform is kind of the, the selection of packages, Zappy, ZenOps, storage management, and all those things. Um, so that's fine. The other thing that it's come to mean is a binary distribution which looks very, very much like Zen Server. So I often call it xcp.iso. Um, and it basically is a Zen Server with its branding removed and a few proprietary packages removed. A few proprietary ones left there, actually, on the Windows drivers. Um, now, that specific use case is kind of evaporated now Zen Server has become completely open source. So following XCP 1.6 and Zen Server uh, 6.1, which are basically the same thing, uh, we've converged the two to become Zen Server 6.2. And there is an upgrade path there. And one of the things that uh, that will enable is when Citrix publishes hot fixes for Zen Server, um, previously, people have had to unpack those by hand using GPG and stuff, uh, extract out the RPMs to apply them to XCP. Um, we, will we will be able to have those hotfixes applied to people using Zen Server in an XCP-like fashion. Um, I believe at the moment uh, we are limiting the automation through Zen Center, um, but Zen Center is open source, and we all can uh, replace if statements if we uh, if we wish. So. Um, that we think will, and also it helps because we're removing the delay on the XCP releases. It took a very long time, if I recall, to get XCP 1.6 out, even though it's basically the same as Zen Server 6.1. So, Russ, there's a lot of information here. Yes. Did and there's two minutes left. <laughs> and just because, you know, you came here and you thought it's a conference, it's easy, it's quiz time, okay? So we're going to see how good your knowledge of Zen, Zen Server, and Zappy is, okay? Here we go, first, first question. Zen, Zen Server, or Zappy? Let's hear it. I'm listening, I'm listening. <laughs> Zen, Zappy. Answer, Zen. He's the Zen Project mascot. But I so, guess, that also, I guess, does cover Zappy. That, so uh, somebody very, uh, very on the ball here. Yes, yeah. very good. Next question. This is a picture of Zen Center. Is that Zen, Zen Server, or Zappy? The correct answer, Zen Server. Zen Center is part of Zen Server. And that is now open source. Open at Citrix. Now. What falls under the auspices of a Citrix open source project? Is that Zen, Zen Server, or Zappy? Zen Server. Very good. <laughs> Linux Foundation Collaborative Projects, Zen, Zen Server, or Zappy? Zen and Zappy. Zappy is a sub-project, so it's still under the Linux Foundation Collaborative Project. So that, that was a tricky one. Now here's a lovely one. The XE command line, is that part of Zen, Zen Server, or Zappy? Here are all three. I hear Zappy. It's Zappy. The XE CLI is part of Zappy. And by extension, Zen Server, for those that uh, said that. Now here we have the XL command line and another uh, uh, command there. Is that 
Zen, Zen Server, or Zappy? <laughs> the answer is Zen. The XL command line is part of the Zen project stack. And yes, you can use it in Zen Server and so forth. But we, don't, we don't always recommend it, though. You will be uh, <laughs> treading on the toes of Zappy. So be, be careful. Be careful. Oh, well, OK. Then, then I put a nasty in there. Sorry about that. OK, here's the extra credit. QMU. Is that Zen, Zen Server, or Zappy? Answer, trick question. It's its own project. <laughs> we just use it. <laughs> Yeah, but it's not part. It's not technically part of the Zen. Pro it's not part of any of the of these projects. It <laughs> so anyway, thank you very much. Uh, more information for those who need it. Of course, uh, the uh, zenproject.org, zenserver.org, uh, the blogs, the wikis, and uh, this presentation will be up with all the others later, as well as with the uh, the video when it becomes available. So thank you very much. Uh, so we're going to take a five-minute break. Is Larry here? Yes. <laughs>